Hi, I'm Brian Crombie, and we're going to be talking on The Brian Crombie Show. We're going to be talking about politics, arts, business, and social issues on The Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. Good evening and welcome to the Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. You know, going back to school has got to be one of the biggest issues for a lot of people in, uh, in well, frankly, the world, uh, but uh, but particularly here in, uh, in in the Greater Toronto area. Uh, and so I thought I'd check in with Gail Bannister Clark, who is the president of the Peel Elementary School uh, local, elementary schools lo local here. Uh, she's also on the executive of the provincial body that's uh, the Elementary School uh, Teachers Federation. Um, and uh, I've, I've talked to her before about what's going on and I wanted to catch uh, her uh, back uh, uh, on our show to find out how the teachers are dealing with it, how the pupils are dealing with it, and what she thinks of the provincial government, which I think is probably going to be negative. So it'll be interesting to have Gail Bannister-Clark back with us tonight. Gail, how are you? Hi, Brian. Uh, you know, okay. <laughs> so the first two weeks, what do you think? How's it's, it? Uh... It's been a challenging two weeks. Yeah. A very challenging two weeks. So we started today, I would say, is really our first day. Last Yesterday, sorry, it's Tuesday, isn't it? Uh, so yesterday was our first day. Uh, we started online as well as, as in person with full classes. And um, it's it's been a challenging go. Uh, teachers received their teaching assignments on Friday and some didn't receive a class list until Saturday. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So it's been very challenging. And, and what about uh, the pupil-teacher ratio? Has that been reduced? Is it still, you know, I think when we talked before, you were worried that some classes would be up near 30, uh, mm -hmm. 30 kids, mm -hmm. uh, um, that the average might have gone down, but the, the extremes might be high. What's happened there, do you know? So face-to-face, -face, it, it is a little better. So we have a hard cap of 23 in primary classes, uh, so one to three, grade one to three. And uh, for kindergarten and grades four to eight, we have a cap of 25 students. So most classes classes are, are in that are range that. And, uh, and or a little under. So, so I interviewed a, a teacher better. from uh, Malton and she was saying that actually sort of self-selection is working. Half of her kids chose not to go back uh, to school are going to do the uh, distance learning and um, and she's only got 14 kids in her class and she said this is great. Well, I'm shocked that she only has 14. I, I haven't really seen those numbers. I haven't gotten all the data from the board yet uh, in terms of where our numbers sit, but uh, my vice presidents were working with stewards this week and, and getting those numbers, and I haven't seen many classes of 14. I would say that's an anomaly uh, and probably won't last. We are having reorganization happening on Friday, so uh, I'm pretty sure that that, that class will, will get, rise. Will yes. get increased. Yes. And, but then I heard that there were some classes that were empty, classrooms that were empty beside classrooms that were overfilled. So mm -hmm. uh, some teachers that were, I guess, put onto uh, the distance learning, the uh, virtual learning, and the classrooms sitting empty. Is that? Yeah, absolutely. So we have this space. We have the space to lower class sizes and create new classrooms, but we don't have the staff to, to actually teach the class. And there's been a couple of schools that uh, have already uh, had COVID infections? Oh, quite a few. Uh, every day I receive emails. I, I don't know who has been infected, but I receive uh, that, that information that someone has tested positive. Daily, I, I would say I get at least three And that's schools. teachers or, or, or students? It's not identified, so oh, I don't really? know. Oh, really? So just so someone in the school. That's and so right. what happens? The, 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 that, that individual obviously has to stay home. Mm -hmm. um, what happens to the rest of the class? It depends uh, on the situation. So I do know that this week we had a student who tested positive. So all of the students in the classroom have been told to self-isolate, so they're remaining at home. But staff are monitoring. So they are coming into the workplace and monitoring if they get any symptoms. And, and how long do the kids have to stay home? Two weeks? Yeah, two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is going to be incredible, and and uh, and you know, just uh, uh, this week, uh, you may have seen that uh, the Canadian Public Health came up with some new uh, projections that mm -hmm. are you know a huge increase yes. in the second wave, uh, and they had three scenarios: one, if the social distancing that we're currently uh, experiencing stays the same; one, if it gets worse and people have more contacts; and then another one, if uh, you know, flattened if we we have less contacts. But I can't see people having less contacts. Last mm -hmm. couple of weeks, we've had going back to school, going back to university, uh, parties, uh, barbecues, uh, you know, everything. Yeah, absolutely. And, and certainly nothing has changed in schools. 
right? Uh, so now I, I believe we're not supposed to be around anyone more than 10 people, you know, grouped together um, inside a building. Um, but in schools, nothing has changed in terms of the restrictions, right? We have 25 students in the classroom. They're not even a meter apart. Uh, so certainly there isn't any physical distancing happening Are they there. wearing masks all day long? They're wearing masks all day long. Uh, in kindergarten, it's optional. Uh, so, you know, we are seeing some students come with masks. But the case that I described where students had it, it, it was in kindergarten. It was in the kindergarten classroom. Oh, really? mm -hmm. So, and it's very challenging to keep them apart, as you can imagine. And they don't have, you know, desks. It's, it's just a very different setup in kindergarten. So, uh, you know, very, very challenging. It's a very challenging situation. What about, um, uh, you know, I think that uh, there was a decision made that uh, teachers would come to students and the students would stay in the class rather than uh, 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 students going from class to class. Is that an issue in elementary school or is it the same as it's always been? That's uh, yeah, that's a change definitely in, in the elementary setting. It's a it's a challenge, you know, for my members uh, because many of them uh, are interacting then with five five classrooms uh, full of students. Um, so you know they they feel uh, afraid. You know, there's a lot of anxiety about um, about the possibility of them uh, coming into contact with with someone who has COVID. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and uh, you know, I've heard from a couple of teachers that one of the things that's very strange is they're no longer walking around the class, that uh, they're not having that kind of one-to-one uh, -one personal interaction with their students anymore. They're not LA, you know, allowed to look down at the book, that they're up at the front, they're behind their mask. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. they're wearing a mask and a shield. Mm -hmm. um, that's got to be a really different kind of scenario. Oh, it's quite different. And, and I heard, you know, many students were anxious. I mean, students were happy to return, yep. right? Uh, they love seeing their friends. Their friends. Again. Absolutely. And, and they love their teachers, right? Uh, but um, but they were anxious, you know. And there's a lot of new rules, and and they're they're used to being able to, you know, especially in primary grades, hug their teacher and, and those sorts of things. And you know, you have to keep your distance. So it's, it is very challenging. And um, our online situation isn't much better. It's different different issues uh, because you know there isn't that physical uh, issue um, of contact, but. Uh, we have high class sizes, so we have over 30 kids. You know, there are some online. online. There are some classes that have you know 37 uh, students, and and that's a challenge as, as well. What about? Uh, and I don't think you're doing this in the elementary schools, but in the high schools, they're doing you know two days at home and two online mm -hmm. and two days uh, at school. Does that uh, make sense? Do you think? Well, I mean, it'd be interesting to see how that works out, uh, you, know, <laughs> you know, for them. Um, we have a similar situation where we have teachers doing what we call a hybrid model. Uh, so we have teachers who are um, teaching in the classroom face-to-face, -face, and then they're also teaching online. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's creating some challenges. But students themselves are not going back and forth, you know, into the two uh, different streams of, of learning. Um, but uh, our most vulnerable students, we have... Uh, our, our special needs students, and um, we call that contained classes of special education. And uh, last week, Wednesday, we learned that um, because of funding, because of the lack of funding, these teachers would have to teach online as well as teach face-to-face -face because right. so many students uh, went to the online. Uh, so, you know, that's created huge challenges because the programs themselves are so specialized and unique uh, to the individual learner. And, um, and then safety is an issue as well, because if you're in the classroom teaching, you can't be online. And if you, if you're, when you're online teaching, you can't be observing what's happening with these students um, in the classroom. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, these are our most vulnerable students. So these are ones, ones who, are special who are special ed right. students. Um, so they may be autistic, they may be delayed, they may have behavior issues, all sorts of um, developmental issues. Uh, these are the students that I'm talking about that are doing this hybrid uh, model. Right. What about recess? What about gym? What about lunchtime? So uh, at, um, at recess, students go outside without a mask and uh, teachers are concerned because the cohorts then, you know, aren't being maintained. Um, students, you know, move freely. Uh, they're outside, but, you know, they're not keeping any physical distance. And then when they're having lunch, they take off their mask. So. <laughs> you know, but, again, but where in their classroom? In not, the classroom, they're in the, in the classroom. No, they're they're in their classroom, so that they've remained in that same space. Uh, but again, their desks aren't two meters apart, yeah. so they're taking off their masks to eat. Well, 
You got so to. You have to. You, have to. <laughs> you can't eat with a mask on. Yeah. But it's just the, the challenge, right, of not having that physical distance. Yeah. That space, yeah. you know, that that we know um, health practitioners have said is what we need in order to stay safe. Well, they're saying, um, you know, the the space. They're saying the mask. They, they're saying the ventilation. Well, you and I talked about this. Have you have you seen any action on ventilation? Improved ventilation? Uh, no, I mean that takes time, yeah. <laughs> right? So it's not it's not going to happen, you know, in in a week or two. What so. about you know? I've seen a couple. Of, I've been driving around. I've seen a couple of uh, classes outside. Is there mm -hmm. any of that going on? Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely, people are taking taking their kids outside, and and that can continue as long as the weather stays Weather's nice. Okay. Yeah, but that sounds like it makes a lot of logical sense. If uh, the probability of catching it is so low outside, makes sense mm -hmm. to to do that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is a little bit challenge because you don't have all the resources that you need sure. to teach, you know, outside, right? But but definitely, there are teachers who do that on a regular basis, like even pre-COVID, yeah. um, and, and definitely there are some who, incorpor who are incorporating that into their program presently. We're chatting tonight with Gail Bannister-Clark, who is the president of the Peel Elementary School, uh, Elementary School Local, Teachers Local <laughs> Union. You got it. <laughs> um, and, uh, and she's uh, been chatting with us about uh, what, what it's like going back to school. We're going to take a break and come back with Gail for more, and we're going to talk about what she thinks about the provincial government. If you are looking for a dedicated and honest real estate agent, then meet Wasif Khan, servicing the community for years in resale and pre-construction projects. Sell your property in top dollars with TV, radio, social media, and MLS marketing. We also help with mortgages. For all your real estate needs, contact me at 647-786-8765 or visit wasifkhan.ca. Team Farhan Mortgage Solutions Aapki khidmat mein pesh pesh 15 saala tajurbe ke hamil Aapki zaruriyat aur marzi ke ain mutabik karobari rehayshi tamirati aur zarai mortgage services hamara kam tarin mortgage rate Team Farhan A Team Farhan we're here for all your mortgage needs Müşterilerimize iyi ve kaliteli hizmet vermeye özen gösteriyoruz. Nüfus kül el tesilat el kuruz el maliye li kül el nüa el kuruz. Here at Team Farhan, we have mortgage solutions designed for you. Team Farhan, ko ek defa hizmet ka zaroor mauka dijega, and this is my personal promise to you. You will not be disappointed. At, at Team Farhan, we, we have, have a mortgage, mortgage solution designed for you. Mazid malumat ke liye 416-569-9294 ya phir visit ki jiye hamari website www.teamfarhan.com Welcome to Soho's Fashion Studio, a wonderland of designer and bridal couture, where our in-house designers will design your dream dress and our fashion houses in Pakistan will create it. Find casual to luxury fabrics under one roof. Quality is our number one priority. We are open Tuesday to Sunday, 12.30 to 7.30. Shipping internationally and within Canada is also available. Visit us at 2275 Britannia Road, West Mississauga, Unit 15 or call us at 647-967-0351 Air Wings Travel and Tours North America ki sabse bai tamad aur fastest air travel services 25 saal ka tajarba liye la tadad affordable travel deals ke saath excellence in customer services on just one phone call ye hai Air Wings Travel and Tours for booking call now 1-855-247-9464 or 905-272-2300 Air Wings Travel and Tours Consumer Choice Award recipients and GTA's top ranked service provider Dixie Electronics authorized dealer of all major companies shop with a peace of mind and low prices are always guaranteed I promise best customer service and lowest prices in GTA because we beat prices from all major stores and small stores. At Dixie Electronics, our motto is we sell quality and deliver confidence. Dixie Electronics and Appliances, 5120 Dixie Road, Unit 11, Mississauga. Phone number 905-625-5900. Are you looking for a different type of realtor? Meet Suheil Khan, broker owner of Century 21 Innovative Realty Inc. 
You don't need to know a lot about real estate, but you do need to know Soheil Khan, who knows a whole lot about real estate. He knows contracts, negotiations, research, he knows the market, and he really knows the area. When it comes to real estate buying or selling, Soheil Khan is a know-it-all. Get to know Soheil Khan, 416-822-0305 or at SoheilKhan.ca. Experience excellence. Life is precious and health is the greatest gift. The best investment you can ever make is in your own health and life. Take steps now for your health and life concerns, which includes drug and dental insurance, travel insurance, critical illness, disability income insurance, and super visa insurance. We also provide life insurance, RESP, RRSP, and segregated funds. To make the informed decision, contact Babar Chuktai, your health benefit advisor at 416-816-9210. It's 416-816-9210. Was your family or business prepared for this financial crisis? Want to learn how I prepare my clients with the essential financial planning pyramid? For any financial crisis come their way? Hello, this is Zahir Sayed from Roj Financial. For your complimentary Zoom or Skype meeting, call my office at 905-624-0008 or visit arojfinancial.com. Buying or selling a residential or commercial property is one of the biggest financial decisions most people will make in their life. The real estate lawyers at Alam Law Chambers will guide you through the complete real estate laws to ensure your transaction completes on time and your dreams come true. Reliable and affordable Alam Law. If you are looking for a reliable, professional, and affordable travel agency in your town, then your search is over. Global Travel & Tours is your personal travel partner. Our dedicated staff at Mississauga, Jeddah, and Islamabad is always ready to make your trip hassle-free, memorable, and cost-effective. We will assist you with hotel reservations, the transportation, visa assistance, and travel insurance. We are the number one pilgrimage specialist for Hajj, Umrah, as well as Ziyarat to Iran and Iraq. Global Travel and Tours is a one-stop solution for your travel, immigration, and Forex needs. We are IATA approved agents and an authorized Umrah agent. To book your holiday or Umrah package, please give us a call right now at 1-877-275-3555. We look forward to hearing from you. Hi, I'm Brian Crombie, and we're going to be talking on The Brian Crombie Show. We're going to be talking about politics, arts, business, and social issues on The Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. Welcome back to The Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. We're chatting tonight with Gail Bannister-Clark, who is the president of the Peel Elementary School Teachers Local. Not a, it's not called a union, it's called a local. I'm not sure why, but they left the <laughs> union out of there. Well, maybe we'll chat about that. Um, and uh, and uh, we've been talking in the first segment about what it's like going back to school. Um, Gail, I wonder if you could now address what you think of the provincial government um, policies, procedures, programs. Uh, what, what, what do you think about what they've done? Now, you know, clearly the unions, and not just your union, but, but all unions, I think number one, we're asking for um, lower teacher-pupil uh, ratio, so you know, lower class size. And then I think number two, they wanted more time uh, to adjust, particularly in regards to uh, this uh, uh, virtual distance learning. Um, they didn't do the lower, lower class size, but they have done some of that. Um, uh, and they, what, delayed by a week or so, uh, the opening. What do you think of the provincial response? Yeah, I, I don't think that we've had the response that we need, you know, for the reopening, for it to be safe for uh, our members, as well as for students. Um, you know, when you talk about providing funding for, to lower class sizes, our, our government really didn't do that. Uh, there's way more money that's needed in order to really put a dent in, in the class size. Uh, we needed to have a, a greater delay in the reopening. Um, I know that they did allow for, for some a staggered uh, entry and, and a delay, but 
you know, today we still have online classes that, that don't have a teacher. Um, present, uh, you know, I heard in Toronto they're short 500 teachers. I know in 500 our board, teachers. 500 teachers. Out of how many? I'm not sure, but but they're short 500. That's a lot. <laughs> More I'd, that, I'd be that, interested in knowing what, what it is in percentage terms, but that yeah. sounds like a lot. And um, is that and for virtual or uh, or for in class or both? Some combination. I think it's both, but but I, I can't be certain. Um, but in, in our board as well, I know that we still have more teachers uh, that need to be hired. Yeah. I, I haven't gotten the number of how many were short, but I know that there are some online classes where teachers are being asked to provide lessons for these online classes because there there is, hasn't been a teacher who's been hired, and uh, you know teachers need to take uh, attendance online, um, and there are some kinks to that. Uh, there's some kinks in the technology uh, with all students and teachers. So many being online at, at the same, same time, time. Yeah. so I'm worried about the bandwidth I, I just don't know if the government has considered any of these any of just these out things. of interest are there 500 teachers out of work that you could hire in just Toronto like are there that there many are, extra teachers there around? are occasional uh, teachers um, you know I don't I don't know how many they have on their roster you know to to put into these positions but um, but clearly they they need time in order to to do that and so obviously the, the the expense is one issue from a provincial government standpoint but was another issue that if you add these teachers you may only need them for a year or two uh, while COVID-19 and then you got to get rid of them and you know what's the challenge then oh possibly but there is a process of, of being able to surplus teachers is that right. what we call surplus to region yep. and uh, that's that's happened previously it hasn't happened for a number of years you know but um, but there is a process and and it can be done so you could lay them off you there's could, not a absolutely. no layoff kind. so no. so therefore it's the expense that's the issue it's not it's, that, the, expense. it's not the, the, the the issue of hiring them and not being able mm -hmm. to uh, reduce uh, uh, capacity in the future. The other thing that I found kind of interesting is the, uh, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong in this, but I understand that what ended up happening is the teachers that got offered the, uh, or were asked to do the virtual uni, the, the virtual learning, were the most junior with the least amount of uh, seniority. And the uh, ones with seniority were kept in class. But it's the ones with the most seniority that are probably the most potentially vulnerable given Age. Absolutely. And, you know, in discussions with our board, we wanted them to use a voluntary process at first, uh, allowing those senior teachers to be able to volunteer because some of them weren't able to apply for a medical accommodation or a family status accommodation. Uh, so they didn't have a choice about being in the building, but certainly were concerned about their own health right. because right. of their age. Um, Why wouldn't they agree to that? That makes so much sense. It, it does. <laughs> Sometimes they just don't like to do what makes sense. I, I think it's about what's easiest, and yeah. they wanted uh, to do whatever was easiest for principals, not to create a, a greater workload for them, which is what ends up happening, uh, because um, there was a huge increase in the number of parents who wanted their children to learn online yeah. uh, because the government extended the time to opt in. So they ended up having to, to use that same process that, that we uh, suggested in the first place. So I'm uh, sort of a visiting faculty at the DeGroote School of Business. Now it's a you know a, a graduate program. Um, it's a executive MBA, uh, but I taught my class last week and I went in and number one, they'd moved from the regular classroom to a bigger room mm -hmm. um, so they could socially distance. Um, all the students um, and these again are people that are you know mid-career so they're a little bit older they're paying big money at a you know private education university graduate uh, degree but each one of the students were at tables uh, sort of the size of this with plexiglass shields wow. around the tables uh, they were all six feet apart in a big uh, not a ballroom but a, but a much bigger room and um, and then half of the class maybe a third of the class was uh, virtual online and I had in front of me this big TV screen with uh, you know 20 people 20 faces zoomed in and maybe 30 40 people in class um, so my pupil teacher ratio was uh, was terrible it was probably 1 to 60 or, or so um, but um, but socially distant behind shields um, and we were asked to wear, sh wear um, uh, mask as we entered and as we exited but once we were there um, mm -hmm. students behind the shields and me at the front um, we were allowed to take our masks off Wow, that sounds like a great learning environment. <laughs> I wish that uh, we had that in schools. And I had a microphone on and I walked around because mm -hmm. I was being videoed and shown to the, the Zoom at the mm -hmm. same time as I was uh, you know, chatting with the people uh, in class. Mm -hmm. And they all had laptops and uh, my uh, presentation was on a screen but also on people's laptops both at home and, uh, and there. 
Well, and, and that's a, another issue that, that you've raised is just our limited use of, of technology in the classrooms now. But why can't the teacher do virtual and live at the same time? Like that's well, what I, think, I did. I had, yeah. I had mm -hmm. 20 people virtual and 40 people live approximately. Mm -hmm. I think it depends on, on the age of the students and the type of class uh, that, that you're teaching, right? So, I mean, that's what's going to be happening in, in the one class, in the classrooms I talked about earlier, the contained special education classrooms uh, where teachers are going to teach online as well as teach face to face. I'm not sure at how the same that's going to work. At the people. same time. Well, you I'm see, not I sure if it's going positive. to be the same as a video. Well, but these are our most vulnerable students. Yeah. But and I think that was positive because mm -hmm. the people online got to hear and see the interaction that I had with the people that were there live in the room. Mm -hmm. Well, the issue is in elementary education is it's so specialized. Uh, we meet the needs of the diverse group of students that we have. So all students in grade one aren't at the same level and teachers actually differentiate their program to meet those needs. So, you know, where you're just giving, you're giving a lecture, uh, everyone takes that information as they are. Um, that's not how it's done in, in the elementary class. A lot more back and forth. A lot more back and forth. So, it, so it's just a little different. But, you know, I don't, I don't disagree that, uh, that there aren't some unique ideas that can come forward um, that we can make it work uh, during a pandemic. I just think that we need time to do, to do that. And we also need to bring in experts who understand what's happening in the classroom to make it work. And that just has not been the direction of, of this government, you know, to actually involve all stakeholders has and any, experts. Has any place got it right? Like, you know, we're going back to school across the world. Has any place got it right in, in the union's mind, in your mind? Well, I think that there are uh, other countries. I, you know, I can't name one right now, but I know that I have seen where there are other countries that have gone back and, and they have uh, the space that's needed to that's physically key, distance, you know, in, in the classroom. And it seems to be uh, working. You know, you're not getting an outbreak yep. of more cases. And, you know, so I think definitely you can make it work. You know, I'm not um, opposed to... Uh, ideas that the government would put forward. I'm opposed to the fact that they don't speak to the experts. They don't involve experts in their decision making, and they make their decisions based on you know the bottom line, like financial decisions, instead of what's actually best for students and for workers. So Israel last week, as you may know, went back into full lockdown. Um, and I think on on the weekend, and uh, and it was because a month or so ago the schools reopened and uh, and the infection rates skyrocketed after the schools reopened. Not right away, but a little mm -hmm. bit uh, after that. Um, and you never know for sure, but they think that because of that and because of you know people going back to work, etc., uh, the infection rate in the whole country has skyrocketed and it's gone back into full lockdown. I think that's what's going to happen. Really? You know, with us, you think I that's going to happen. Peel, Peel, Peel's rates are are already pretty high, um, and. You know, we need to make some changes. We need to make some changes before more people get infected. So what's the union's current strategy? It is to, you've lost some of the arguments uh, so far uh, in regards to uh, class size, etc. What's your current strategy in regards to the provincial government? Well, it's advocacy. I mean, we need to continue to get the word out there so that people actually know what's happening in, in the classrooms. Um, and we need more parents to advocate. You know, we have we have gotten more funding, like you mentioned, we uh, got a staggered entry. You know, it's not all that that we think we needed, but we certainly did get some movement, and that's because of the advocacy of of parents and and the union and and all education workers. So we need to continue to to do that, continue to have these discussions, and continue to see changes. Gail Bannister Clark, thank you so much for joining us. As we were walking in here. We saw a very nice gentleman with a t-shirt and it said, Where, what will your legacy be? What will your legacy be? <laughs> oh, wow. That's a huge question. Well, it was on I, the t-shirt. <laughs> not on mine. <laughs> but, uh, well, I want my legacy to be one of someone who, who championed uh, justice for, for everyone. Champion justice for everyone. Champion of justice. Well, you heard it. Uh, this is Gail Bannister Clark. She's president of the Peel Elementary School Teachers Union, local, uh, and uh, and she wants to champion justice. Uh, and I think she's going to do that uh, um, for uh, 
pupils and uh, for teachers and for everybody in Peel. So uh, I think that's wonderful that we have these kinds of people that are, are leading our union. I think we'll have to have you back and find out um, what you're going to do in regards to race relations and other, other, a bunch of other issues that we're undoubtedly faced with. That's the Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV for tonight. Thank you very much for joining us.